Hey folks, this is Kalani. The Shadowlands expansion is just around the corner and there are so many different systems that you'll need to get used to and take advantage of when you hit max level. To make sure you're ready and prepared, we're going to walk you through how each system works and what you'll need to do to progress through them to get all of the rewards on offer. In this video, we're going to talk about Renown, the new and only weekly grind in Shadowlands. Before we jump in, be sure to pop by our live stream sometime over at twitch.tv slash Kalani TV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday and Saturday and we always love chatting with you wonderful folks so I hope to see you soon. Renown is a new currency that you'll be earning in Shadowlands and it's tied to some incredibly important progression paths. Unlocking extra chapters in your Covenant campaign to play through the story, cosmetics relating to your chosen Covenant like mounts, gear, weapons, all that stuff, it's all locked behind the Renown grind. There are some power increases related to the system as well. Your soul binds will provide a good boost of damage whenever you unlock a new trait or unlock a new conduit slot. You'll need to farm Renown to progress down the Soulbind tree to earn these bonuses. Certain legendary powers and effects are based on Renown. Higher item level rewards from world quests. Higher item level rewards from PvP. All tied to your Renown progress. So it's going to be important for every single player, no matter what you do in the game. To start earning Renown with your Covenant, you'll need to progress through quite a good chunk of the max level introduction experience, including completing a few world quests and going down to the moor to rescue your first round of souls. You'll also need to unlock the Covenant Sanctum upgrade menu and soul bind with your first champion. Doing all of this will complete the first chapter of your Covenant campaign, which will reward you with one Renown. As long as you work your way through the quest lines at max level, the game should feed you directly into this stuff so don't worry about missing it. It is going to be incredibly difficult to miss it unless you don't want anything to do with your covenant, which would be a big mistake. Every chapter of your Covenant campaign that you work through will also reward you with one Renown, so you'll get little boosts here and there. To unlock more chapters of your campaign, you actually need to earn more Renown. Earning your Renown on a regular basis is actually incredibly simple. There are two weekly quests you can pick up in your Covenant. One of them will have you collect Anima to replenish the reservoirs in your Sanctum, which can be used later to power up all sorts of devices and contraptions to help you in your fight against the Moor. And then the other quest will have you travel to the moor to rescue some souls. The redeemed souls from this quest will also be put to use upgrading your various sanctum systems, such as the quick travel system, the anima conductor, and the mission command table. Don't worry, we'll cover all of these features in another video. Just know that the renowned quests are going to provide you with useful items or currencies that help you progress in other systems, so they are going to be important for everyone. These two quests are the main source of renown unless you fall behind considerably. This system has catch-up mechanics baked into it right from the very first day, so if you fall behind on renown, you might see some extra quests to help you earn another renown or two to help you get caught up. Repeatable sources might also offer up some renown rewards when you get behind, so the new callings, dungeons, world quests. Basically, if you ever fall behind on renown, the system makes it very easy to get caught back up again. This is going to be important for anyone who takes a break, anyone who swaps their main, or just wants to level up some of their alts and get caught up quickly on those, or, as we'll talk about later, anyone who swaps their covenant. If you stay up to date with the Renown grind, you should only be able to earn about two per week. There are currently rewards and milestones up to Renown level 40, which gives us a maximum of 19 weeks of rewards to work through. If you're curious how this breaks down, you start at Renown 1, you get your first one from the first campaign chapter, which bumps you up to 2, and then you can earn the usual 2 in that first week as well. So by the end of week 1, we should have 4 Renown, and then we can earn 2 per week up to that 40 cap. Obviously, if you complete your Covenant campaign chapters as they become available, you will reach that 40 cap faster, so it just depends on how you manage and earn your renown. I think technically you can reach Renown level 6 in the first week, but that requires you to do absolutely everything as quickly as possible. You can check your current progress at any time by clicking on your Covenant button on the minimap, and then clicking on your Renown panel. 
Some of these rewards aren't too exciting, like gaining 2% stamina or unlocking a new adventurer for your mission table, but some of them are going to be huge. If you're into cosmetics, you'll earn different pieces of your covenant set at different milestones, you'll earn the mounts quite a bit later on, and then there are even weapon skins to unlock for your covenant as well. For power upgrades, certain milestones actually upgrade the item level of loot that comes from world quests. If you remember in BFA, the item level of world quests was tied to your item level and it's scaled with you, that's not the case in Shadowlands. You'll have to wait until you get enough renown to see higher rewards. The same goes for certain PvP rewards as well. Almost everything related to your covenant is going to rely on renown one way or another. So you can expect two new rewards, whether that be 2% stamina or a huge new unlock every week if you keep up with renown, with an extra reward in the weeks where you can complete another campaign chapter. Because the quests are weekly, you don't have to rush to get them done in any given week. You can slowly progress through them as the week unfolds, or you can wait until the day before reset like so many of us did for the weekly mythic box in BFA. It's completely up to you. I honestly prefer weekly quests when compared to a set of daily quests because you can do them in your own time. If you can't play on certain days, or if you just can't play for the majority of the week because you get busy or you have other priorities, you know you can at least keep up with this stuff, providing you can log in for 30 minutes once a week. That's much easier to plan for and slot into a busy schedule when compared to playing every day, and even if you can only hop on for 5 minutes every day, as long as you get these quests done in the week, you won't be left behind. You have an entire week to do it, and you'll be caught up with everyone else. One very important restriction to note is that your renown is covenant specific. If you choose to swap your covenant, you'll have to start your grind all over again at the very beginning. Your renown with a covenant doesn't reset, so if you decide to swap back to a covenant you have already earned some renown with, it will be there waiting for you, but this does mean if you spend half of the expansion with one covenant and then decide to change your allegiances, all of that hard work will have to be repeated. You also can't use any of your covenant its cosmetic rewards if you leave it, so you might be sacrificing mounts, transmogs, enchant effects, anything that is tied specifically to a covenant, you have to be in that covenant to use it. That's going to be a very long grind if you manage to get up to 40 renown with one covenant and then decide to change, so changing covenants will definitely be a major decision. While we don't have too many specifics about it, apparently earning the achievements and the ability to fly in Shadowlands later on down the line will also be tied to Renown. So if you want to fly as soon as it's available, keeping up with Renown will help you towards that goal as well. That does leave us with a very interesting question though. If you unlock flying via Renown and you join a different covenant that you haven't earned any Renown with, does that mean you would suddenly lose the ability to fly? We're going to have to wait and see on that one. That could be problematic. But that's hopefully everything you need to understand the Renown system, how it works, and why you'll want to keep up to date with it. If you have any questions left over, please do not hesitate to ask. You can leave any thoughts in the comments section below, or you can ask us questions live if you pop by our live stream. You can find us over at twitch.tv slash KalaniTV. We stream every Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday, and watching the stream and coming to say hi is one of the best ways you can support the channel right now. And if you ever wanted to be included in the long list of names that the end of every video, a subscription on Twitch is the easiest way to make that happen. You get a free sub to any Twitch channel if you have Amazon Prime too, so be sure to take advantage of that. A big thank you to everyone who has subscribed on Twitch already, and to our supporters over on Patreon. You can see their names floating by on screen. If you want to join these lovely guys and gals, well, now you know how. Remember to leave a like just below the video before you leave, and if you want to see more, make sure to subscribe. But apart from that, thanks for watching, folks. Good luck and have fun, and as always, I will see you next time.